All right, guys, good morning and welcome to Sports Buffet on the Legwater TV radio. My name is Daffy Matthews. So you're going to love to call me the Legwater one of sports. Um, I mean, we didn't have this show yesterday. Well, it's going, to, uh, uh, let's be very honest, like, it's going to be like that occasionally because sometimes some events, circumstances beyond uh, control would just happen and we have to deal with it that way. Uh, it's sad. It's not something that I'm proud of. It's not something that, oh, I'm sure enough of, but. Nigeria is Nigeria, and some of these things happen that you cannot deal with. Light situation, you know, generator having fault, or all of a sudden you wake up and then four decide to be scarce when there is no scarcity just because the prices are going down. Man being wicked to man, and you just realize that you had to stay uh, on the queue longer to get for. Uh, sometimes, generally, they might even be for, but you don't have the money immediately so you have to deal with all of that and i expect that you guys would understand it's not easy to show understanding i mean especially when you already have your day planned out to be part of a show and then the show is not coming up i know how annoying it can be i have podcasts that i follow i have content shows that i follow online and sometimes when they're not dropping when they're supposed to drop i just get a bit agitated but i try to understand because i'm in that space so i beg you guys in this community to also try and understand with me it's not like oh i deliberately want to stress people and make sure that oh yeah i mean it doesn't make me feel good but on the show today we're going to say we'll talk about a whole lot of things the things you want to talk about uh i i, I said that today tomorrow we're going to make it about you guys there so whatever it is you want to talk about let's talk about it okay let's get your side uh your side of the conversation uh peter i greet you especially as well let's get your side of the conversation let's you know bring up your like i always say an analyst is just as good as the question that is faced with so if you if you are if you really want me to give you deep analysis which i can offer ask me the deep questions if you want me to sell the top but then there are also topics that i want to talk about uh so many you know talking points speculating around in the beautiful world of sports there's always something to talk about when it comes to sports a kid uh back in the day they used to say that for as long as the ball will roll there's a topic and um i saw something of you know we're, we're, we're planning to move us and i saw this thing i just want to show you guys okay you know where we're coming from do you guys remember this thing this thing this thing this thing this thing you know this thing for those of you that those of you that are there, those of you that are there do you know this thing some of you will not know it i can't explain it if you know it just talk about it on the comment section if you know this thing this thing this thing this thing eh if you know this thing this technology uh if you know how funny it is right now the gen z will not jesu jesu Gen Z would think that uh it's a piece of biscuit that i'm displaying biscuit that somebody gave me as giveaway that i'm showing on my on my screen but um, it's part of the the thing and the reason why i brought it is okay so somebody sent me this message and it was like it's been years and I, every time i read it i just laugh <laughs> okay so mary sent this message she said hi daffy uh i know that uh your show is about sports a good day but i just want you to talk about this on your show you might have one or two experiences that you share that myself and people like me would benefit from how do you manage gen z i saw your team that went to ghana for the all african games is the african games uh even me i didn't make that mistake they call it all african games uh i saw that you said you have one or two gen z's there and other people and from the look of things you don't have a problem you just seem to like slide with them and then i also remember that you worked with people like alison and uh, tasha and the rest of them how do you manage these people because I am a business owner. I'm into catering and cooking and events that I do with my husband and my sister. And most times it's the older people, the older women, older men that are easy to manage. The Gen Zs are very terrible. But I hate to come out complaining because, again, they are very powerful on social media. They would attack you. But I just want to get your own perspective. Maybe we are doing something wrong. Maybe we don't understand how to work with them i just kind of like see that it is easy for you and consider this a consider this a cry for help not just something to laugh about <laughs> that's the part that i always get to laugh <laughs> oh my god right okay not just <laughs> mary sorry 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 i'm <laughs> sorry uh not just something to laugh about but something that Probably your wealth of experience can help. Okay, let me start with this. And uh, 
working with Gen Z, working with working with Gen Z is tough. It's tough, but they are also very smart. They are very intelligent. So sometimes I look at it from this angle that they look at us that our way is too slow, and and they are faster than us. So the things that we want, the way we want them to work, they can be a lot more efficient doing it their way than our way. Now the thing about us is that we've been caught and trapped in that way. Let me give you a good example. Uh, Lately, there's this pastor who, who's he did online with Pastor Lazarus something. And then he said something the other day. And I said, like, oh, just one, just when I'm beginning to like this guy, this guy has also said the kind of rubbish that you shouldn't say. And he said, Nigeria would have been dead if not for the church. I said, like, Nigeria is a more problem because of the church, right? Nigeria was a very organized country, very structured country before the church came in. The advent of the church brought up all the decay that's a different conversation anyway and and and, and when you look at gen z your young people the gen z or the gen alpha i think gen alpha is the one after gen z they have speed that we don't have we were we were beaten battered and smashed into doing what we do and most times we i mean we're supposed to be talking sports so but mary don't drag us out now to talk something different uh most times what we do is we want to give it exactly how we got it. And it's mostly like that. That's why people who grow up without love don't really know how to love people. People who grow up without care sometimes don't know how to care unless you unlearn that and then start learning something different. Somebody like me, I did. I had to unlearn the way I was raised so that I can raise my children and, you know, leave and marry and relate to people differently. But every now and again, that demon of ours raised, that violence, that aggression, always raised its head. It's a part of me that I'm not ashamed of it. It's not a bad part. It's just who I am. Now, but I understand the times. It's in the Bible. It says, teach us to number of days that women apply a heart to wisdom or something like that. So you must understand the times that you were in. That's why the sons of Issachar were mentioned in the Bible. They didn't perform miracles. They didn't lead the nation. They didn't do anything, but they understood the times. So in these times, dealing with them, you should also come. Don't come with the... Gen Z does not understand way bosses. You don't. Gen Z's are the people who come to the office and tell you, hi, what's up? How are you doing? You, they don't. They don't bow down to worship you. They don't, you know, they don't stay one hour over their normal time, and they can come to work without taking their bath, <laughs> without brushing, and kind of, they don't even see it as smelly body anymore, okay? <laughs> Especially if you don't expressly put it. That's why when I used to do audition, I would put it, when I say I need, so I'll put it, don't come if you have body odor or mat odor, so that when I tell you that you have body odor, go back, you won't say I body shame you. I already, it's part of the terms and conditions. And having said that, I think that, uh, when you, one of the things that I noticed pretty early, even way before I got married, you know that thing we do when we employ house help? We employ a house help, but we don't tell the house help exactly what they should do. And when we bring them, we bring them because oh, I've started having children, uh, the, the, the children, the, the house help should come take care of the children. Before you know it, they go from taking care of the children to washing plate to washing clothes to ironing clothes to not cooking food for madame and oga and running there and going to the market they are not doing over and over and over them you know as you permit that very soon has a business sleeping with oga then you start getting angry said this girl from village no 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 you didn't define their rule and one of the mistakes that we all do in this part of the world is that we do not do job specification. When I was working in Brilla, let me use Brilla as a good example. When I was working in Brilla, you know, I started out as a freelancer. I go there on the weekend, do my thing, and I go. And I, I come from football. Now, in football, there are times, and uh, before anybody will say anything, I also work in corporate organization. I worked in Globestar, I work in Escravos, so I work in structured corporate organization, leave football now. So I understand the best of both worlds, right? But in football, which is like the mainstay of my life, there are hours, so training cannot go more than four hours. No matter how you, you train in long reach, it's actually two hours, but mm, thank you, Mrs. Zedafi, uh, looking always looking out for your, the best interest of your husband. You know, training cannot go more than two hours, right? And any other thing is just extra. Say, I give be push over four hours. So you know that of the 24 hours, you have 20 hours to yourself. Four hours, unless you're having team meetings, some days, not, it's not an everyday thing. After that four hours, any other thing you do, for as long as it does not endanger you and the club, it's your own. So when I came into media in 2004, I knew that that's how I was going to work. When they offered me the job in 2005, Nesta, 
uh, Sunny, uh, offered me the job and I asked him, the first question I asked him is how much? Because as a footballer, that's the way we have been wired. You know, when somebody tell you, oh, come and play for me, the first thing he asked is how much you want to pay me? <laughs> you are like you don't you don't get excited. Hey, let's go do the job. They don't give me a job. No, we don't. We'll not be those kind of people. That's why somebody like me, you will never. When people get visa, they go and do Thanksgiving. Like I don't know. I don't know what that means. I've been traveling since forever, since I was three months old, right? No, I asked him how much do they pay people, and he said thirty five thousand naira at the time. This was in two thousand and five, and I told him, I said, Nesta, you know, you know where it is still. My house, like is two million naira. I have two cars. If I go, why not? Why not? It's three block away from this uh, uh, 634 Adio Malakija, where you're uh, Ebene, uh, Eleganza Beauty. That place, one night, I was spent at You want me to walk one month? They come here every day, every day, every day, drive my car, drive, come here every day, every day, every day, every day for one month for 35K. I don't fit. So they say, okay, uh, just be doing your weekend. And I did that from 2004 freelance. 2012 where I signed a contract to do Pigeon English. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. When I negotiated my contract, I remember the first day the conversation was made. I was doing live score. It was a Sunday. It was Larry Zamuji's birthday in February 2012. I just got married, you know, the previous year. My wife was heavily pregnant. I got a job. The funny thing is, what this was the period where I now got a job because I was also tired of the radio team. Yeah, you have a baby coming. I got a job in NDDC. It was a fantastic job. I'd gone to Bayesa, gone to like sign off. They've given me money. I was good, right? And and then and then I got this call. But before then, in February, this was April now. But before then, in February, I was in the studio in Bogija. We had moved to Bogija, and then Oyin Damola came and said, "Chairman wants to see me." I've not been to his house before, so I didn't know. So and I said, "I, I can't go alone. If we're going, uh, let's drop at my house." It's, the way to the place have my, my it's uh you pass my place first before we get to lucky so let's stop at my house pick up change up and pick up my wife and then we go yeah because i mean i was a young married man i want my wife to be part of everything that i do so she knows if i fall down and die tomorrow there's anything which she won't benefit she will get her not be say family poco -co -co -co, say uh, our brother our brother you know that kind of thing i didn't want that who we went and we discussed it and I expressly said, oh, God, I know if you walk past three to four hours, so I know fit. And so they say, okay, if that's what you want, we'll make you, we'll give you a contract, not a staff. I said, it's fine. It's okay. I will negotiate it. We negotiated back and forth, back and forth. We agreed. So uh, it took time, February, March. Nothing happened. I said, these guys are not even serious. So I, I took that job in, 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 bias, in, in bias at the end of the C job. It was paying like four times more. And then it was a whole lot of allowances and bonuses. But just when I was signing up for it, I got my money. The call came in. Uh, you know, you have to come start the show, blah, blah, blah. You never even give us name. You never do line us. Like, we talk and you guys didn't come back to me. That's so, like, I don't know what you guys are doing. I said, oh, no, it's about to, it's time to start. And then I flew back. I went to Putaco, flew back to Lagos. And long story short, we started the show. And let me tell you why this whole long story is coming up. In my own head, I have an agreement that says I work for hours. Okay, at that time, I was doing the show in the morning and in the evening because I was the only person who could really do pitch in English sports the way they wanted done. So I'll come in the morning. I'll come before 6. I start 6 and leave by 10. Then in the evening, because of that half time at the middle, I'll come in the evening and I'll do it. And then I'll close by 5 o'clock because Murphy, the A team, that time it was Murphy, Ayotundo, Nobolu, Sean Amadi, uh, Ike Double Double, uh, brought Chris Casey Brand. You know, some of these guys, the, the, the Chinese man, a whole lot of other guys. Onomel Brude was also coming in once in a while. Um, MCRB was also coming in. My guy was also coming in once in a while and, you know, adding pep to the show. And once he finished, I leave. But occasionally, Murphy was like, ah, bros, join me now. Remember, Murphy started with Sunset Star Supply. That was a flop, a complete flop. Many guys couldn't do it. But when he did that uh, evening show, that was the, like the, the best. Now, people were not happy because there were people who were staff who were coming to work 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. and they will close 10 p.m. Re listen very well so that you understand, Mary. These guys were coming and doing that not because the company wanted them to do that, but because they chose to. They felt like they were loyal to the company. They didn't have a life. So for that reason, any other person who have a life, they didn't want it. Remember, these were people who, when they started, it was, I mean, probably the first place they've ever, ever walked in. 
and they were leaving their parents home to come. So working was a freedom to go out after they left school. Me, it wasn't freedom for me. I had worked in Globestar, I had worked in Escravos, I'd worked, I played professional football in Nigeria, I played abroad, I've traveled around the world. I was different. And so I understand labor and time. But people were, my, my colleagues were angry. Like, that's what really brought the beef. Like, who the hell is this guy? What does he think he is? Be, 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 be. First time I see where you're working in a place and your whole colleague are fight, working against your, your success, right? But my point here is, because I understood what I signed, what is in my document, I didn't bother. So that's how Gen Z's are too. They understood that, okay, this is what you want me to do. I would do it. But most people, most modern, old, most old people of my generation like that, after you don't do what you, they say make you do finish because there is time in your hand. You should join and do all that thing. If you don't do it, it means you're not loyal. It means that you're not dedicated. No, it doesn't work like that. So Mary, are the people, you, the Gen Z you're talking about, are they doing the job you want them to do? If they're doing it, nobody about any other thing what they need to do. Just say, now nah, learn to like double up their labor, but pay them proportionate to the work that they do. So that as you they give them the work, you could pay them like that. If not, you'll get a problem. You see that crew I carry good gun. Mm -hmm. I have learned that okay, this generation, that Jackie work. I remember one time I was uh, I was still part of Swan and I was having conversation with the older generation. And somebody said that, oh, you know, eh, we work like we're talking about Toby at the podium. And I was like, yeah, I think that this boy is going to be like the best thing very soon. It's going to be his drive is incredible. Say, no, you know, you know, get respect, you know, get manners. And that boy go fail and we'll block him for this time. You know, uh, we, 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 we sacrifice on, we'll work under Mitchell Obi, we'll work under Pobasi 20 years before we even see like, before we even see microphone, like 10 years of working behind the scene. And I remember asking the guy, he's a big name, you guys know. I mean, I don't talk to him. I don't, he's not my friend. I don't like this kind of people. And I said to him then that, listen, Okay, because you suffer 20 years, no me see every other person who can suffer 20 years. Times are changing. What took you 20 years might take somebody else two years. Moses suffered for 40 years trying to free the Israelites. Joshua came in within seven days. He carried the mental promised land. Joshua is the hero. So now, now so life they always be. One person would have to crawl for another to walk. One have to walk for another to run. Another would have to run for another to fly. And then the, 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 the circle is like that. And the next generation would always find it easier than the previous generation. That's the prayer, okay? But people don't see it like that. So I think that, I mean, maybe that practically answers your question. The people that have worked with a gain, let's also be nice. They've had their damn time. I mean, I've dealt with somebody like Alison who's like, a mood swing is crazy. But I've always seen her like my daughter. I remember the first time I called Alison. I, I think that this, who, she was doing NYC in poise. I think this whole front desk thing is not what you're called for. You're called to be a superstar. Come, let me walk with you. Come walk with me and let's see how it goes. She, that girl was crazy. And I, I mean, I remember if you see her, you ask her. I say, come, I'm not trying to toast you. My wife fine past you. I don't do can your head. Like, I could be that crazy. I said, my wife fine past you, but I want to make you a superstar. Like, I just know that I can. And for me, it's a personal thing. Like, let it also be on record that I made somebody outside of football a superstar. And she was laughing. The rest, as I say, is history. So you must give them something to work with, something to like. Okay, let's come back to football, please. Uh, hey, Mary, I'm sorry, but that's the way I see it. Uh, just check your own dossier, see what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong as well, and then cut off the ones you're doing wrong. But one thing I can tell you, Gen Z don't like people shouting at them. You shout at them, they're not as strong as we are, okay? You shout at them, they recoil, they cry, they go on social media and blast you, so you have to find the balance because you're the one that need them. They have something you don't have. They have speed, they have skills, they have smartness you don't have. You have experience, yes, you have the age, but you need them to run. You see, if you see the elevated TV uh, TikTok handle now. I've been doing TikTok since forever. We just did that one for less than a month. It's, it don't obliterate my own. That Gen Z girl, that small girl called Joy, she knows things that I don't know. And <laughs> I mean, I gave an audio from 2015. I said, what can you do with this audio? Imana Lamunik, if you go to my own, it's on the YouTube self. You see what she did with it. It's just a simple audio from 2015. Yeah, I still have in my archives of, um, you know, back in the day, interviews that me and uh, Francis Achi, Totori Master did. And I just, I, I said, okay, let me even play with it. I could not do anything with it. But that girl just took the audio and turned it into a good mind. Am I going to not say, oh, because she's this, she's moody, she doesn't wake up early, she doesn't, ah, oh, don't forget to, mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, go Ghana, they tell me, I'm not a money person, no. And look at me who wakes up by 3 or 4 a.m. You're telling me you're not a money person and I'm spending about 10 to 12 million era. And you're telling me you're not a money person. 
he go make me verse, but if I verse, I go miss out all the things that I gain. So I just I and I had to conscript myself and configure myself to fit their own timing. Okay, you're not a money person. Okay, don't worry. That's why you notice we miss some of the spots. All of the event that they did in early in the morning. Yeah, we not we not do them because the people the people are carry on. Even Teresa, no, I'm not a money person. No. You know, so I just have to figure out what works and it worked well for us. Some people might not be able to do it. Some people might not like it. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, sometimes you have to find a way. Uh, Madam uh, Mary, uh, that's what I think uh, you should do. Uh, you should look at it like that and it might just work for you. So let's come back to football people. Now, first headline that I saw this morning that got me laughing is Eric Ten Hag, please, for patience from Sir Jim Ratcliffe as a cause for Manchester United Corona to resist temptation to interrupt the process. Interrupt the process. Now, I'm asking Manchester United fans because what do you not know? They say who they ask questions, they lost. Now, so my mother used to talk that I, uh -huh. or I don't know. Okay. So I'm asking uh, if you know the process because I, I know Man City process. I know Liverpool process that culminated in all of the sources. I'm, I can see Aston Villa process from yesterday yesterday's aston villa to naemri's aston villa even though they were beating without only what games for go, for goes to one Aman city beat them now people realize that Man city is not as lazy as it was oh, Arsenal, Arsenal couldn't even score against Arsenal couldn't be them see people will score against them that's what you get when you go to man city and you say you won't go score against them score against man city with that kind of players where they get you have to defend who <laughs> now they have every fisherman they go see you so i'm not corner of water Eh, tebe tebe water. Neither they tell they use hook they catch fish. Eh, fish is fish. Oh, my job brother will say fish. He say fish say. He fish he fish say. That be every fisherman they go high sea they go. <laughs> eh, so it's a match is where you want to play. Akpovona, Uruboma, Bumpiki give an Akpovona. He gets key. Akpovona eh. So he gets key where they tell they. Uh, hey, 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 uh, so man said to not be uh, we don't come who are you we don't come uh, I can't who, 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 they will beat the hell out of you now that's Pep Guardiola he takes joy you know why you when I never watch that new uh, series <laughs> uh, together treble hey god we are together they, they go drop point for one match see the way Pep Guardiola the verse I say he I be just one now they win six now. I drop point nine. But that is high sports, high performance. The the mentality is different. The look is different. You can't drop. You can't afford to drop the ball. You know, we play against us now. After that match, they drop uh, Ellen Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne. Nothing happened. You know, the, the people will play say here. Yeah. They drop our our number one and number two, Capon and uh, number two. Hey, hey, who goes the who goes you? Hey, hey, take your chance of before they find the goal though, because. If he drop Alin Haaland, I be saying me said if he carry me go to go train with under 15. No. Uh, you know understand? And it just turned out to be. And Pep had to come out to explain Mikel Ateta. Uh, Arsenal boss Mikel Ateta had to change his ways, rotate his team. He doesn't normally do rotation, but he had to do. He had to call that Ibo child. Rotechi, come and uh, do, do this thing here so that everything work well. And uh, as they talk of the Bible, all things work together for the good of them that love God and accord according to what? His purpose. It seems like Arsenal is called according to the purpose of God to win the league this season. They are back on top of the league now, Man City. Uh, Liverpool have a game in hand anyway. Before they score the hat-trick and uh, everybody is... Uh, and I mean, this before they talk, you know, we'll come off the ground. So much to talk about, but uh, like I said, like I promised, I'm going to bank on you people to be the host of the show. I'm just going to be your analyst. So, Drop your question, pop up the question, and let's have a conversation. Now, some other things I would like to talk about that somebody, okay, so somebody sent me this. Um, Jared, I like that name. I hardly see that name. J A W R O E D. Jared said, uh, Where's that Jared? Let's see. Okay, because it was sent yesterday in anticipation that I was going to do a show yesterday. Hi, Edafi. My name is Jared. I'm reaching you all the way from Auckland. Auckland. That's. Australia side, uh -huh. Oceania. If I, I'm not able to watch your show live, but I always go back to watch it and I enjoy what you're doing. I got your number from someone who works in the same place with me, who's your friend. His name is Tolu. Okay. And he always watched your show and then I got on to fall in love with it. I want to ask you a question. Not for criticism's sake, but for clarity. 
why is it not why did you say the super egos cannot be handled by the ex-international or nigerian coaches most of the successful teams have had their own countrymen handle them why is nigerian case different in senegal winning the african cup of nation the other edition was by a senegalese coach morocco going very far at the world cup to the semi-finals was by a moroccan and Cote d'Ivoire recently winning it over Nigeria in the finals was by a uh, was by an Ivorian. I say Ivorian. Why do you think Nigerians can't coach the team? Well, the the reason I think I've given this reason before. If you watch the previous video, I've said it. So our players are way different from the players of Morocco, the way different from the players of Senegal. I mean, we're all Africans, we're all humans, but I, I, I think that as a Nigerian, you will know this, okay? I just came back from Ghana, and one of the things that I noticed, because, I mean, I've been to Ghana before, but I've not stayed this long. I've gone there. When I do Al Jazeera project, I go to Ghana, I just go in and out, I move like that, like transit points. But this is where I, like, I really interface with both the, the high and mighty and the, the low. One of the things I noticed in Ghana, and they quickly tell you, no pressure, no pressure. Shall I? No pressure. Okay. Ghanaians are not in a hurry. And it kind of like help, you know, define something. Like when I was in Germany last October, too, I noticed that with the, the Bavarians, the place where I was in Germany, I was in Munich. And I noticed, you know, that nobody's in a hurry. That's why when we drove from Nigeria to Ghana, it was only our vehicle, our boss, Mr. Wanzi, GU Motors was the only one in the whole journey that was pressing home. No other person from Kotonou to Togo as we were coming. It's the only vehicle that was pressing home. And it was very obvious. We, I mean, we noticed it without telling him that you're the only guy on this road that is pressing home. Is it like you think that the other drivers that are driving without pressing home, they don't know anything good about driving or you're the best driver. And But it couldn't stop because it was not a reflex action. Now, one of the things you notice is there is a common word that Nigerians use, and I'm going to put it on the table. Do you know who I am? I go show you. I go deal with you. These are very common vocabularies in our lexicon that is not found everywhere. Maybe in America, because America also have that kind of haughty spirit of feeling like they are superior to everybody. Nigerians also have that, right? So when you look at the Nigerian player, anything we exhibit as individuals, our players also have it because they are just a, an element. They cut off the same cloth with us. So when you see how they behave to local coaches, Nigerians uh, generally, and whether you live in Nigeria, whether you go abroad, that spirit of wanting to show off, wanting to oppress. I don't know if you guys remember, but most of us who grew up in the poor neighborhood thought that the only reason why you should have money is to make money so that you buy your landlord house. I mean, if you if you remember growing up like that and you hear that conversation, you would understand what I'm saying. The question that nobody asked anybody back then was, uh, who tell you say when you make that money, your landlord want to sell a house? And who tell you say, <laughs> you know, we used to say this like, when I get money, eh, I go buy this house, I go break and down, we used to the play, we'll call, turn this place to fit the play ball. Like, why, why is that your ambition? That that's how stupid we can be. But I'm I'm going somewhere with this conversation. Our players, once they make the kind of money that they make, remember, we're not raised with financial awareness. We're not raised with the knowledge of money, like understanding how money works, dynamics. That's why, you know, a player like Anamokashi, for instance, who once upon a time was any very big, was massive. I mean, in the 90s, you're earning 35,000 pounds every week. And then, you know, you get to one stage where you don't have a dime. <laughs> yeah, because... Money, any fool can make money, but it takes very intelligent people, good team around you to manage money. Managing it, you know, money is not a lawyer servant. It's, uh, it's a foolish visitor, but a bad servant, very, very bad servant. So you have to have rules and principles governing you, your ethics, your behavior to be able to manage money. Money, there is no money that is too big that it cannot disappear, right? So once they have that kind of money, two things they measure themselves with is who is running after them? When you see all the celebrities that they grew up wanting to, to even be in their presence, to just see, now running after them, they realize that they are bigger than you. So the players, again, let's remember that they are, our ex-players have a virus, a very bad disease, the disease of now we suffer, now now they enjoy. If you look at all our ex-internationals, one of the reasons why most of them can easily succeed at under-17 is that the 
cruel manner of coaching at under 17. These players that they are now wanting to coach in the senior national team have not gone abroad and see professional coaching, the ethics of coaching, the way coaches, even though they are going to be firm and tough on you, the way they talk to you is different. But these ones come in and tell you in our days, eh? We, we you know what we did. We won Nations Cup. What have you people even won that you are carrying should Now, if you if you say that to a very rich footballer, he go mess you up because nothing beats a man with pride. Uh, Ariel said something to me that I will never forget. That just keep me sane every time I think about how Nigerian players behave. I I get disgusted by them as well. I talk to them and some of them are my friend, but I just tell them like this can't be evil. What's in the world now? But hey, in 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 a public place. Aria said, what do you think if you put poverty, extreme poverty here, illiteracy here, and then you not top it up with plenty of money and fame that they cannot even explain, right? What that cannot be explained is intoxicating. And, 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 and you would see the really worst part of every human being because money amplifies whoever we are. So that's the reason why it is hard to coach the Nigerian players, not necessarily because these coaches are not tactical, don't understand again. That's one part of the problem. Another part of the problem, the average Nigerian is obsessed with being loyal to a white-skinned person, okay? And when we talk about white-skinned person, look around the whole globe. Which race is crazy about bleaching cream the most? Nigerians. If there is another one, maybe I don't know, but statistics that I have says that Nigerians. You know why? Even pastors, look at the majority of Nigerian pastors, they must marry a fair lady woman, if not be white woman, but the lady have to be fair. And, and even black people like to get a fair-skinned woman. If they don't get direct white woman, they'll get a fair-skinned woman. There's something about us and our loyalty to white people. I've always said that one of the things that I've never understood is how when Nigerians want to talk to Hebrew people, we try to melt our accent to fit them. But when they want to talk to us, they don't melt their accent to fit us. Does, does that not really surprise you? So we are naturally inclined to be loyal to white people, even if they are not good enough, but because they are white. Now that's the second part. Then there's the third part. This part is where I blame the ex-players. When we employed Gunnar Raw, first thing he did was to bring his backroom staff with him. And he said, uh, even if the NFF is not going to pay, he's going to pay from his own pocket to them because he need them to get the job done. That's a coach. That is a professional coach. We left him, we brought Iguavon. Iguavon came in, didn't come with anybody. This is the football technical director of Nigerian football. My guy, but we got to tell the truth here. Now, uh, for the sake of Jared, he came in, he didn't bring in anybody. They gave him Yobo, they gave him, uh, it Paul Agbogun was there. Yes, they gave him Paul Agbogun, they gave him uh, the other guy, the a goji. They gave him a goji. They gave him goalkeeper trainer, uh, Aloy Agu. They gave him one other person who was also there. I think Ikeshirumu came in somewhere along the line. You know, there were a lot of people. They just they, uh, go join the go join the national team. Then after we went to the Nations Cup and lost in the round of 16, they brought in Amunike. To be very honest with you, Amunike have no business being there. Amunike is a coach on his own. It's like saying Mourinho go and assist Pep Guardiola. It doesn't work like that, okay? I'm, uh, uh, I've said this thing on one, one of the show that one of the things that I hate about Nigerian footballers and that pisses me off about that make me just not respect them is Nigerian footballers are the only people in their own ecosystem that hate it that people are trying to be successful through them. Nigerian footballers would block every road to make you successful. Let me give you a very good example. In Nigerian footballer, if you call a Nigerian footballer and I say, hey, hello, uh, I, I, I know some, let's use Aineke, Nigerian Brewers. I know somebody from Nigerian Brewers who they are trying to get a brand ambassador and I mention your name who, uh, I mean, they agreed and they are willing to pay, say, 500 million, right? Naira or five, 50 million dollars. That Nigerian footballer, just because, say, somehow you go make money, and not from them, oh, from Nigerian breweries, they would rather make that deal no work so that you're not going to make that money because you might make 10% of 50 million dollars and that's like five million dollars and your life will change they're not going to call you and they, they don't think that you can still be loyal to them you can still be friends with them anymore they will block the deal guess what they'll go find one person from abroad one person and you try if you follow nigerian football well you will see this they'll go find one person from abroad to come do the deal they will not from behind get it and tell you well i, I you're, i'm not you're not my agent you're not you're not managing me so you have no right to claim anything that they will go there are a lot of people who watch this video now 
who will tell you that it has happened to them. That's one, especially within the journalistic uh, space, okay? Having said that, that's a very common thing. So all these parts put together is the reason why it cannot, it's a marriage that will not work. It is hard for a player to play under a coach that they cannot respect. Nigerian coaches, Nigerian coaches do not, I've never seen a Nigerian coach ever, if you know anyone, apart from probably Sunday Lise, who got hired and he brought in their backroom staff. And Sunday Lise just brought in one. Uh, uh, What's it called? Sasa also brought in one. All the rest, that they hire backroom staff for. You know what hiring a backroom staff for a coach means? It means you don't know your job. Because coaches have philosophies and ideologies. Yeah, the way they, they, they think. And what you see on the field of play is the interpretation of how a coach thinks. It's like a church and a pastor. I've always said that a pastor that grows up in a village, in a uh, poverty setup, would produce a church where they always catch witch. A pastor that grows up in a home where there is plenty of money and they go abroad a lot will produce a church where there is always uh, prosperity preaching. A good example is MFM has on the rock. That's a very good example. I'm not trying to run anybody down, but I'm just giving you a pointer to my conversation. All right? And again, pastors who grow up in deep poverty always think that your job in Christianity is for God to bless you so that other people will bow down to you, e.g. Adeboye. I'm just using that as an example. So in, in, in coaching, every coach needs their back. If you notice, every coach that is appointed anywhere in the world, they come with their backroom staff. And that backroom staff is who work with them as they go. Every coach that doesn't have a backroom staff, they, they easily fire them. Because when you come here and say you agree to work with the guys on ground, they will work against you. And in working against you, they will make you look foolish. So those are some of the, the elements that are not always aligning. You know how when, uh, if you if you notice when the big personality come on certain shows, they'll tell you when he moved the planet aligned, the galaxies aligned, he comes with his own planetary system. Every coach should have their planetary system that work. I, I was telling somebody that Pep Guardiola, for instance, is a Rolls Royce coach. He's the best coach in the world currently. And one of the all-time greatest coaches. But you see, if you put Pep Guardiola in a system that is an interregnum to him, he go fail. Because the people around, not they swing in his direction. The frequency net they walk. If you do physics, you understand what I mean by frequency. You cannot put uh, 50 gigahertz of frequency alongside 100 gigahertz. You not go walk. The thing not go work. The, 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 the pendulum not go swing. It not go balance. It go fry something. Something go go wrong. So you must put the people around likes like mind who who see something in the same way in the same direction. And then once the player see that oh I can't break these people. There's nobody forming one group in one corner discussing. Oh, I don't know what this coach everybody thinks. Of. How this coach would make this kind of selection? You know, and you see that every day. I, I, I now wow, coach. You know. It becomes a problem. I saw that with the World Cup qualifiers. You know, before the match starts, I know say we're going to lose that match. We're not going to qualify. Because people were already, they were murmuring, they were grumbling, and co people were supposed to be like assistant coaches. Oh, wow, I, don't, I don't understand what the coach coaches do. Eh? That, is not, that is not supposed to happen. So those are some of the things that affect it. Guys, uh, like I said, if you have questions, we should have it going right now. Uh, these are questions that have been here since that have been hanging and I needed to deal with them. So, Let's go to the comment section. Peter Isaac says, Elegotel Sports, I greet you, especially I greet you too, bro. Uh, Tosi Luyoma Day says, uh, Nakastero used to play songs from your phone in the car back then. Okay, uh, you, you try. I wrote to Rego, so now we need to put, please go and change your profile and put it in our easy old two or three years of hard work of research. But I beg you in the name of God. I know people will be say once they put this doctor to their name, once they do their PhD, a couple doctor to their name, that small alphabet, D R O to their name. <laughs> they should have part go high pass on. Oh, no. Please, no research art to enlarge penis. Oh. <laughs> the rest of the world they bring solution to to people with their education. Nigerian education I had to enlarge penis, had to do fake yash. How to do tape one, hook one, like, 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 like,
Uh, just tell people say me they neat, me they bath well. They like 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 go come out. Eh, okay, reporter. You go especially in Portaco. You go Portaco. Like that's like the highest thing. That's why like the 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 all the governor they get they be like who the Chris. Sorry, my Portaco people man of us. I go and make out. Uh, you know, um, I mean, it's a game for this whole world. Even Donald Trump not get live band. Okay, but that court producing governor that have live band. So they pay them. You get to see it. And people for that state go to blame president. You get that kind of governor. Well, I do plenty of head brisha. So fly over. with the color. Arotorego says, Dr. Arotorego says, uh, Dr. Joseph Aruturi Ego. He says Foden is still a spectacular player. If I talk, say he is better than Saka, then he beat me. Is Phil Foden better than Saka? I don't know because again, I'm not one of those who really rate Saka high. I think that Saka have many layers of his game to go. Uh, one of the things I have a conversation with somebody the other day, and I said, Is Saka better than Robbie Van Persie? He said in Norwich. Is Saka better than Jose Antonio Reyes? He said in Norwich. I said, so where is this world class coming from? Because Jose Antonio Reyes, you people never agree that it was world class. So, and, and that's also the reason why I said these days the football standard don't drop. Because if you look at a Foden, I can put him in the in the Robbie Pires bracket. And I'll rate Robbie Pires above Bukayo Saka. I'm sorry. I mean, you guys may not agree, but this is me. And so sometimes this conversation and the argument, you get the way they be. But hey, let's leave it like that. Uh, Dr. Joseph Aroturego, he says, uh, Foden is still a spectacular player. If I talk, say he's better than Saka, then he beat me. Nobody will beat you. Yemi Dynamite, how was your trip, your birthday trip to Morocco? Hey, they switch if girl, if they give herself treat. Like just let me give myself treat. Let me, this soft hour, they suffer. And I'm saying this thing with all sense of respect and humility, not mocking you people. But to be very honest, eh? Now, country we're not good. Now, I make people jack power, you know. And so, those people where they go up, I'd always talk and so that people where in Nigeria go, no, those are your family members where they're abroad. Here's the picture where they take for abroad, eh? He find past their picture where they're in Nigeria. There's a reason why, not the sun and the hardship. But in the full stretch, if you put their life on a spreadsheet, Nigeria better pass their brother the day. Now, just say infrastructure better for their pass here. <laughs> it just be like go Ghana. When we go Ghana, my my crew, eh, Ghana is better than I just say, I shut up. When I know, when I... See, the thing is, eh, a lot of people, and eh, they quick realize this thing. Because there is electricity and the traffic is not that hard, they say Ghana better pass Nigeria. I start breaking it down. Ghana, a useless country. He, he used less like tissue paper, eh? We wet for front of public toilet. It's a nuisance. You not get any use. You not get value. I gave them example. I gave them two thousand Ghana cities to go to the market. That's two hundred and fifty thousand naira as at the time to go to the market and buy food. So they came back and as much more bags they carry come. I said, yeah, this is two hundred and fifty thousand naira. As bad as you think, say Nigeria, if you get carry two hundred fifty thousand naira, go market. You will come with bag of rice. You will come with this. You will come with a lot of things. But you know, it didn't, it didn't, it, we didn't get all of that. So, money exchange rate is not the thing that you use to judge a country. It is value. What does the money give to you? And so, and I also took them out. And I went out a liter of fuel to the value of Nigeria is one thousand eight hundred and sixty naira in Ghana. I see you don't know, see. I'm not see. If to say we they get light like Ghana, nobody will complain. Say four and six hundred or seven hundred. Nobody will complain because now just your motor you could buy her for now because it would buy her for Jen every single minute every day and uh, talking about that thank you very much dr joseph arotorigo for making it possible that we're able to run the show today uh, for following us you know so those are the reasons why people they feel bad or people they, they, they complain but you can fix when you fix those things you will see the difference well that's a long conversation uh yami uh well done for your trip abib ayodeji abibi come to dubai he said, I be Gen Z, but I remember playing songs, radio cassette with it when growing up. Uh, millennials always think we grew up with technology, but rather we evolved with technology. Gen Z, did Gen Z use this thing? Uh, so you were, you were like 10 years and you were already using this thing because this is something that uh, was between 1998 and 2010. So this thing didn't have much. It didn't have a longer shelf life. This was uh, a radio cassette, uh, car audio cassette adapter, right? 
uh, it didn't have a long life shelf, uh, 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 10, 15 years at mass, okay? So uh, Gen Zs are people that were born from the year 2000. So at what point were you playing it? I don't know, but if anybody said to you that you are a Gen Z, and but th that point is correct because they start to burn now from when they tell us the world go end. I remember the time they tell us education for all by the year 2000, they say the world go end. Rock clearly in 1999, moving into the year 2000, people were confused that the calendar will not be able to change from 1999. And you know, church, ah, God, religion, religion of killers. In the year 1999, they say is the highest mark of the beast from 666 to 777 to 888. 999 is the highest mark. I like, I was in church when Pastor preached. I say the year go and the world go end in 1999. They say, you see that 999 is the end of the world. Since 1999, it's 24 years plus now. <laughs> uh, uh, believe, believe pastors at your own peril. So, if anybody say that the person is not wrong per se, but hey, try to understand that uh, there are people who in generations, are young. you know when they say somebody, people used to tell me that I'm a young man with an old soul. I'm old now, sure, 45, so I'm not young anymore. But back then, they used to say that. Like my son now, my four-year-old son is a young, he's a kid with an old soul, the way he thinks, the way he talks. So people like that. So you might just be one of the millennia, uh, one of the Gen Zs who have... Um, uh, no, Gen Z is not even 2000. Millennials might be 2000. So, you know, you can't be a Gen Z and say you use this thing. You are too smart to say you use this thing. Gen Z is not really smart children. The oldest Gen Z should be like 15, 20, 20 years max. Uh, so, bro, you're not be Gen Z way you say you talk, talk about the usage of this thing because you're too small to use that, to be very honest. Uh, they don't use that for us, not like car. So, you do, which car you the drive where you use that? Let me say more rotation from Mikel because the Fisher's model, I still believe party will join the starting eleven soon. He is getting his fitness gradually. Now that party will kill us. When the time go reach, now that Thomas party will kill us. But make it just a play, shall I make it play best. Lord may I say, Ego Rilasso, say he performed for one match now. Nah, comparison don't come again. But the perform consistency is all through the season now. Nah. Senna Tonato. Are you an Italian or a Spaniard? Okay. He said, as we're coming in, please hit the like button and share. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Johnny, Johnny. Yes, Papa. <laughs> I, my, my son used to like that song. Uh, Johnny Gaffa, I say, there's no process. <laughs> I was waiting for him to come and tell me something about Eric Ten Hag. Say, there is no process with ETH. It is just freestyle. <laughs> oh, God, I didn't plan to, I'm, I'm sorry. My United fans, I'm, I'm, let, me, let me wipe the laughter out of my mouth. Oh, I, I don't want to laugh. <laughs> awesome. Oh, God of heaven. Ah, God. But, you know, you know, when I read that, it's like, wait, process? Which process? ETH, you know they do process. Because if you look at, my, let's be honest, and I agree that he's also suffered a lot of injuries, I brought about inconsistencies, and some players that are not just, you know, matching up, meeting up to the standard, people like them, Rashford, people like them, uh, Lord of Lords in football. Uh, Anthony Marcel and some of, and uh, DJ Anthony, who is running on the wheels of steel, Right. Some of those guys are not coming to the party. I agree. But Una Emery took a team that is way below the Man United standard, the current squad of Man United versus the current squad of uh, uh, Aston Villa. They're not being mates. But see what he's done with Aston Villa. Even riding over the head of the shittiest team in the world, Tottenham Hotspur, and then Man United are there. And then you're telling us the process. What really is the process? Again, people say that he's not been empowered. I don't know how empowered he should be. Maybe he should go to Redeem Camp or MFN Camp and do Power Must Change and so that he'll get power because I don't understand. But hey, I agree with you. He's just freestyling. Paul, I agree me. My guy, my guy. It's a good morning, Leguete and our viewers. I watched Foden yesterday. And if England wants to win the Euro, England not going to win Euros now. Nah, stop. Uh, Foden must play as a 10. But knowing Gareth Sadgate, now nah, heavy cola. <laughs> This is the word. This cola is the word. The first time in my entire life where I hear that I have to go and face a panel of NBC. Ah, the people where they do rules for Nigerian broadcasting, they don't get sense. So, ah, you are using derogatory statement. 
can you use the word cola? I said, I said, madam, sorry, do you know the meaning of the word cola? It's a pidgin English word. Do you know the meaning, the origin? Do you know what, what it, it connotes? He said, you are speaking English. I said, no, you because I did do pidgin show now, I don't go to school. I, be. I said, you know what it means? I used to say you find a radio station half a millionaire just because you assume. And in, in, in English language, say, assumption is the lowest level of knowledge. I'm not here to disrespect you or insult you, but it does seem like something is wrong here. Cola is another word for O22. In Yoruba, Yoruba, let me say it in vernacular so that you understand. They say somebody, say somebody is either you are hot or you are not. You are either bono, you are bono feli feli, or you are otutu. Right? Pardon my Yoruba if it's not right, but what cola means is cooler. Right? Cooler. Cooler. It's like cooler. They look out for cooler. Worry now for kifai di to a slangs and say you are a cooler. So you don't cold. You are not the hot again. You know, if you ever roll dice, if you ever play dice back in the day, you ever gambled and you roll dice, like both does. I don't know. Some of you don't know this slang where they speak now. It like it be like too sicky. You understand? Okay, no, that I for Ludo. Too sicky now, Ludo. It like both does. Yeah, does is twelve, two, two six. If you ever roll, and cola means your hand on cold. Say your your hand in the hot again. And most times, if the people that are playing dice will tell you, if you're on the hot, so touch the dice, touch the dice before I roll up. So you're the hot. But when you start touching the dice and they get two eyes, snake eyes, me say you don't cool. So it's not an insult. It's just to say, this guy was once upon a time the greatest guy. He was winning, going on beating. Now he don't cool. Now cola. Leg berry. Somebody went lazy. Just like for last say, Paco and Swegbe. Understand? So it's not, it's not, it's not a, Insultive word is just a descriptive. It's an adjective. It's a pigeon adjective. Do my all look me? It got weak. So, people should be very careful. Now, when I define money, there's a be there are better way to go about it. And then they, they squash the case. Well, we almost uh, they almost paid that money. And I'm not saying to say they paid that money. If I hang the, the toga for my neck till I come up for that radio station, but thank God I had to go and sit in the hearing and save myself. Yeah, me I say I lived in Germany for five years and had horn sand only once. I shock you. <laughs> Young but thank God say reading others' comments and listening as usual. They hear me said uh I went on to say the but trust me when I came to the 38 Nigerian state, London, them don't carry the spirit of on enter <laughs> enter. But if you go countryside, it's just like Germany, no unnecessary use of horn. I wonder why people press horn that much anyway. Uh finesse professional. He said, What do you think about Falcons game with South Africa? Seeing them arrive in Nigeria before our players, I did feel oh, make it not be like say that jeans of not qualifying for Olympic will continue. It does look like the girls, the Falcons, want to qualify. Okay. The thing with the Falcons, uh, they are like Chelsea and Barcelona. It is hard to banter them. They've been so successful that even if they get carried away, you can forgive them. And I think that the energy we saw in New Zealand may have also dropped. The bar may have dropped. Their precision, you know, was not there. You, you know, you just kind of feel like, okay. But I think they want to go to the Olympics. South Africa are doing what a a sane organization would do. And they, 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 they know that, okay, this one on the match of our life. This one will not be easy, people. Playing Nigeria, I see, we'll play them in the semifinals of the Nations Cup. We're going to play them over two legs in the World Cup qualifiers. We're playing them in the Olympic qualifiers for women. There's just something about South Africa and Ghana that is always, you know, always there. So they're doing everything. They're putting in everything. Goes back to the Kobe Bryant world when it was asked, why don't you give the last shot, last shot to a teammate? And he said, I watch them come to the training. And I see them do two hours and go away. And I'm still there doing four to five hours. I can't trust the destiny of a game to a guy who just do basic. I would have to take that shot because I have paid the price to end the right to take the shot. If the people out there say I'm ball hogging, that's their business. But listen, I want to win. And there is somebody hanging over my head. His name is Michael Jordan, who's got six rings. And every opportunity I get, I'm not going to always have the opportunity. But I'm not going to transfer the destiny of the game in the hands of a guy who just play basketball just because he has talent and he has the opportunity. For me, this is my life. So, South Africa, that's what South Africans are doing. Member modes, you know, tunnel vision. Focus on this game. Do everything you can. Don't let the weather be an excuse. Don't let the travel be an excuse. Get it done. 
Nigerians are like Samson, you know, who went into the Lila's house as uh, Bob Marley and came out as Aru Kelly. You know, well, uh, you know, it's us, it's us. And, you know, there's a tendency to feel like that. Naturally, even the super egos that are not doing well are arrogant, not to talk of the women who are de facto winners, beat everybody, score goals, but, you know, they're they catching up, but they're not realizing, realizing it. So they will come in and you can't write them off. I'm hoping that we win. I mean, we've not been to the Olympics since... Uh, 2016 in terms of football. So I'm, I'm not hoping that they we, would win. I'm hoping to also go to the Olympics. And uh, even though so I, I, I came in late, so I've not, I, I, I'm not I'm uh, not eligible for accreditation as accreditation have closed, but I'll find a way to be in Paris by the grace of God and see what I can do. Having said that, I think that I would not be surprised. I will not be overtly surprised if we end up being knocked out by South Africa. That I don't want. I don't want South Africa beating us. I have so many South African friends that would kill me on WhatsApp, so I don't even want it. Just because I have Ghanaian friends who, once the Nigeria lose, it, is, it seems like it gives them orgasm, and I don't want it. So I want Nigeria always beating them. But they are still trolling me for losing the women's uh, uh, African Games finals to them. So it's one of those things that even the World Cup that they qualified to, they still use it against me today. So I don't want that. So I'm, I'm sentimentally hoping that we will do what we know how to do best. But then that's how Samson always do what you know how to do best until they pluck here. Uh, uh, Michael, my Michael, say good morning, everyone. Good morning to you. Alatun Jimana say ETA should go. I beg. He looks confused and lost of ideas. I have always said that the, the team isn't as bad as ETA is making them look. Yamida yeah, Namai say now nah, millennials use that cassette to and uh, VHS uh, tape. I have a, a VHS tape player in my house. My children doesn't know what it what it means. They just, they just think that I have one box there that doesn't make sense. Say not to not to say my yoga, I be Lagos boy with small to go blood. Oh, really? Uh, your name be like Italian or Spanish. Uh, Abibi. Abib, I did you say Gen Z starts from 1997, 1998. The oldest, the Gen Z is 27. I will be 26 in a month. Please, somebody explain to me how Gen Z they start from 97, 98. Who, who, who draw the calendar say 90? No, I don't agree. So where millennia for start, I beg. If Gen Z start for 97, 97, 98, where millennia for start? Then where baby boomers can start? What's that? Come on, don't come and create to our own calendar. Not be everything now. Now work first, first for our head. Ta, come on for here. Obara Regere says, Regere says uh, what's the update with the appointment of a new coach for the Super Eagles? I learned they are appointing Emmanuel Amuneke. Well, I've, I've been hearing rumors. But all of them are rumors. There is no no solid concrete uh, talk. Uh, normally, you know, when you open the uh, position for uh, a general application, you will not hear that they shut, they've closed the window, which they did. And then you will not hear that, okay, these names have been shortlisted and then they are doing interview. But hey, this is Nigeria. In Nigeria, things are never done properly. Things are never done the right way. So even when you think, oh, for once, they're going to follow a procedure that is comfortable with them, like making the this thing open, and then they will not say, okay, you know what? We gave it to everybody to apply uh, for fairness. But that's never going to happen. Now, what's it in their mind? They go still do, but they just give you this impression. It's like when they tell you uh, CBN is giving loan. The people that won't give the loan, they don't already sit down for meeting, tell them, oh, they can't come out publicly, come and answer. Then you will not wake up when they give the loan. You don't know anybody, even if you know 20 million Nigerians as friends, none of your friends at, uh, get the loan. They apply, though. All 20 million go for apply. No, no one go get the money. But your current yes is they give some people money. Like all these, uh, you know, traders loan that time way. Oh, Jesus, that man, Elisha. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I've never seen anybody. No, I don't know that my no story law. Ah, Jesus. Ah, man of God. Many silent for the liars. Ha, ah, I'm a Lucas after four years of Bwari. Tell us publicly, and we never, we, we never react. Say Bwari is poorer now than he was before he became president. I, I, I shock. I say, blood of God. Ha, oh, mama. I'm a, I'm a red, I'm a Koji. Hey, this one, eh? your parents train you. Well, let's do that matter, Sha. Uh, online can say millennials are from 1980 to 1994 95. Now, then they cut the window. So, between that 95 to the 96, where this bros talks, so who be that? Where that one day from? Uh, online can says, uh, wait, wait, let, let me come. Let me start with motivational talk. Uh, Thought. He said, concerning local coaches, we can forget it. Luke Halfinidi was uh, 
crucified for losing a friendly game. Why Pesero didn't win one, win up to 10% of his friendly games. All I can say, Gen Z starts from 1996, 97 to 2010, 2011. From 2012, it's Gen Alpha. Are we really serious right now? I'm confused. Though. Are you guys saying the things that you're saying for, for fact or... We invented this this map. This I'm not this map. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not part of it. Uh, Obari say, what's the okay? I think I'm right down. Like I said, millionaires are from 1980 to 1994, 95. Eh, okay, what of 96? So the people that born in 96, who they be? Uh, because they say now 97, I and nine <laughs> Gen Z is that too. Uh, uh, Eruma Russo, Emery is a good coach. Now, bros, it he <laughs> said, he said, Emery is a good coach now. It's not toy. E, Jesus, people, we can do. Uh, Senator Tonato say, I don't the, I don't the island for six years. I fit count how many times I don't hear car horn. I, when I tell people, say, pressing of horn eh, is a bad habit that Nigerians invented. They say, nah, lie. You cannot drive without people. What if they come and jam? I say, nah, nah, horn, go stop car from jamming you. <laughs> wow. Now, nah, nah, wow. For some state, some some places that they go right, do not honk. Oh. And I play, you like what they write, do not urinate here. You know, not to say that thing now, nah, nah invitation for people to peace there. <laughs> do not urinate here by the police. They do, right there where they put us, so you see, policeman stand, bring the touch light, Pooh, they download water. <laughs> Nigeria, this country, we are good. We are very unique people. God created us special. <laughs> Motivational thought. He say a player that did not play at RB Leipzig for a whole season and then had the balls to confront his Oibo coach suddenly grew wings to confront Finidi just because he didn't play in one game. Now, wow, that's my point. Now you you, you see what I'm saying. They will go and then the coach where they coach IB Leipzig so at that time. So no one win anything. No. You, you, you have a coach who's won the Nigerian League, who won the Dutch League, who won the UEFA Champions League. Not be as fringe player, as a key component of that squad. Hey, Akaba Dasala. Hey. Oh, God. Worry boy. When I say yes, say, look, man. <laughs> Confr I go break your nose. I think I'm not coach. I don't fit. Go back. Go worry. Jarama, you know, Jarama, go ask them when I be their coach. You try nonsense. Get on board. You don't die. I didn't want Colombia. Very tall. Tall striker. <laughs> it do not sense at last. You're not going to see me. Never see you're going to Yeah, Jesus Christ. The son of Didi Talibia. <laughs> the grandson of Diliqui. <laughs> the great grandson of uh, Bidiki. <laughs> Jesus. Now me. You want to talk to me? I go beat your papa. Nothing, nothing go happen. The time is man, not get the job, not that, not the profitable. I can't live on the look, man. Can't get that. That way, twisty brain. More leave them. Now, 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 now the Nigerian thing. Sama Karimu say Gen Z is from 2000. Uh, Tosi Adebambo say millennial was from 1980, 81 to 97. I don't understand why they peg out for 97. No. It, 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 it is not supposed to be a fool. What is a millennial? A millennial is a hundred years, Abi. It's a hundred years. So at what point you won't come put them in the middle of another person, another person here? I don't understand. A decade is 10 years. So why, why are you guys cutting it into a middle of something? No. Why would it be from 1980, to 97? Who put up for 27 years? I'll be 70 years. Who put up? Why not complete 20 years? I, the, this is not mass. No, it's not matching. Yeah, me that I said, these, those born in 96 are the crossover generation. Okay. Uh, yeah, me that I say, generations born... Uh, what's it called? Gen Z is 1997, 2012 is millennia, 1981 to 90. Uh, and I don't know what I talk. So, Gen Z is 97 to 2012, millennia is 81 to 96. I know this is my calculation. I'm not going to accept them, it's unacceptable. And finally, um, Yami Dana, I say, I really wish the Falcons qualify. Will the mate team, what did they do you now? Would not come out since now. You don't remember when Guinea Bissau beat us for Abuja win uh, this guy. Uh, Salis Yusuf now, our coach. The video day for this, you know, they follow the channel. The video day here now, where they beat us now. She, I was in Abuja that day now. The day before Guinea beat us 1 0 for Abuja for uh, qualifiers. Don't forget, we'll call go Guinea, go beat Guinea 1 0. 
for the nation's cup, the this past nation's cup qualifiers now. Shoot, why why did you like say you're not be Christian? Why you behave like you're not a shadow of God now? You should know all these things now. Shoot, you are you are a descendant of Noah, you should know these things. Why you behave like this? Eh? There are men in the common sense now. Where's your sir? That I was just qualify us. They say, uh, Solomon Dalong, the mum word, say who send them. Uh, oh, bless my wife. Oh, I've dressed well, face cap like FBI. Oh. Well, now the heat time you dress like this. Oh, let's give me two minutes. My go drop you. May maybe just just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Let me let me sign off now. I'm done. Uh -huh. People, I mean, I've got to do husband duties. Okay, let me bless my wife. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Chai say. All right, my people, we'll continue this thing tomorrow. Eh? Yeah, it's sweet to do. Uh, let's everybody say thank you to Aretri, Dr. Joseph Aretrigo for providing us the full money that make us do the show. Thank you very much. Uh, those of you we get the church might support. I'm support to the project hard. He <laughs> had this Nigeria. No, they need, when they see light, they say band A, band B. We we'll know any of the band. As Z, we do. When they see light, yo. When you are that's why I tell I think the show sweet me. I don't know if it, if you're not sweet to another me, not me because I'm gonna get on our family problem. I'm gonna go suffer, but I know the show sweet me today. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Once again, I always like to say this: don't be the problem, please be the solution. But in case you can't be the solution, try not to stand in the way of those people who are the solution. Okay, God bless you and have a wonderful day. My name still is Ida Femati. I'm gonna like to come in the Thank you for your time. <laughs>